feel like it's been forever since I've recorded. Feels as weird as it always does though. <laughs> Hi, my name is Amanda and this is my YouTube channel where I show and tell you guys what I've been making for the past month or so. And it's from knitting to crocheting, sewing, uh, cross stitching sometimes, anything fiber arts related is kind of what I delve into. So if that's what you're interested in, then stick around and see what I have been making since August, I guess. And yeah, there's a lot of finished objects. I don't know what happened. I just kind of went a little crazy and didn't record any of it for my Instagram or for this or anything. <laughs> just kind of went elbow deep into, is that the saying, elbow deep? You know what I mean. I just kind of hyper fixated on knitting and sewing and didn't record any content for it. So it's a kind of like a surprise for you guys. <laughs> If you were keeping up with these show and tells and there's gonna be a lot of stuff you haven't seen or heard of in the previous episode So buckle up <laughs> um, Yeah, so just uh, get cozy and I'll just hop right into it because like I said got a lot to talk about <laughs> um, So for my first finished object, I'll go ahead and just show you guys the one that I actually did talk about last episode which is my muscle bra hat and this is made with knitting for olive merino it is I use the two millimeter so if you don't know this hat or this yeah this hat pattern it is from Yolanda Teak I think is how you say that name um and you don't have I'm sure you've heard of it if you're not a new knitter it, it doesn't have like a specific needle size or yarn weight you can use because you start out in whatever yarn or needle size you want and kind of just get gauge as you go and then it has a chart that tells you how many increases and how many rows given your gauge um, to get the finished hat like length and stuff and it is basically just a tube <laughs> and I just did that and it's gonna be impossible to freaking put it back into the tube and show you guys it on. Um, while I try to figure this out, I will talk to you guys about what my gauge ended up being with this yarn and needle size. So like I said, two millimeter uh, needle size. And then Knitting for Olive Merino is a fingering weight yarn. I had it perfect before I did that. Why did I do that? <laughs> it's a fingering weight yarn. And I ended up having gauge eight, which I think I think it is, that's how many stitches per inch. So I had eight stitches per inch. Um, yeah. Well, it's not perfect the way it was. Well, actually, there you go. Just kind of fit into itself just then. Um, and I knit the main just like stockinette stitches for 18 inches. I don't know if that was more or less than what the pattern had called for. I have made this several times before and I feel like every time it always ends up being just a little bit too small. I can't really get as much of a fold on the brim as I want. So I think that I could still have made this a little bit longer. I probably would have been happier with like 22 inches, um, but that's okay. I still really like how it turned out. I think this is actually the best knitted hat I've made so far. Uh, it looks very clean and like a, just like a store bought. A hat. So let me put it on and show you guys. It's uh, double layered because it's a big tube folded on itself and then you can actually fold it again if you want a brim, which I like. Um, so it's actually a four layered brim for your little ears if it's cold outside. Keeps it nice and warm. It is a little bit tight, but that's pretty good for me because I feel like everything I make is a little bit loose. I'm actually kind of happy with how snug it is. Um, and oh, the size I made is the adult small also. So yeah, I really like it. And it, yeah, it's just really simple. And I think it's gonna be kind of a staple for winter time this year. I'm not really a hat wearing person, but I feel like that's really because I haven't made a hat that I feel like is 
neutral enough and just the stitching is the right gauge and I don't know I feel like it's just kind of been meh with every hat I've made <laughs> so I don't really draw towards it but I can really see myself wanting to wear this a lot this winter but we'll see we never really know do we <laughs> so yeah this is my muscle bra hat I want to make more of these um, they're really good for stash busting I think I I used a ball and a half maybe of this stuff and those come in 50 gram um, skeins or balls so if you have like a an odd 100 100 gram just like skein of something like fingering weight or worsted or whatever then this is a really good project to do to use that up with which I do have a couple of those that I don't know what I'm going to use for them so they might end up being muscle bra hats <laughs> but it's also really nice to just knit around and around and around on a fairly small circumference good for knitting and reading which I have come to love recently so yeah muscle bra hat okay so now we're getting into new territory um I actually made my own sock pattern I used there's a book called Vogue um I think it's the stitch dictionary one is I found this a pattern called garter cubes and yeah I just used that knitting books like pattern repeat for the top of the sock and I've made I've made socks in the past so I know like the basic construction of it I found out with trial and error that I really like toe up socks and I like short row heels and yeah so I just kind of knowing that and knowing how many stitches I usually like on my foot, I cast it on. The toe is with some, y'all remember back in the day there was a company called Knit Crate? <laughs> uh, I still have some of their yarn, just scrap amounts of their yarn in my stash. And this was a sock yarn that they had. I think it was called Hot Cocoa was the colorway. It's a nylon merino blend, so I knew it was gonna be good for the heels and toe. And then this is some more scrap um, knitting for olive merino mixed with their mohair base from when I made the vest number eight last year. I, I had so much of that yarn left over. <laughs> so I've been trying to use it here and there because it's good yarn. Uh, yeah, so those are the yarns that I used for these. And um, let's see, the needle size. I used a 1.75 millimeter needle for these and I think, yeah, I used it for all of, so I didn't like change needle sizes. Sometimes I do that with my socks. I'll make the, the needle size smaller for the, the toes and the heels just to get that tighter gauge. But I think I did 1.75 millimeters for the whole thing. And I'm, I'm debating on whether I, I should go through like every single step because this is a self-drafted pattern. If you're interested in knowing how I made these, I am more than happy to um, write them out in the comments if you're wondering. But it's basically just I cast it on stitches for the toe, and then I did some increases for the toe wedge. And then this was the garter cubes pattern's actually really simple. It's just a, I think it's a two by one ribbing with like, um, like garter rows every three rows or something like that. And I did just stock it on the bottom foot, which is really nice. Nobody really talks about it because it's kind of obvious, but I feel like I should say it anyway. It's nice to do just plain stocking it on the bottom because I don't know about other people, but I find texture to be kind of hard to ignore on the bottom of my foot when I wear socks. So that's why I did stocking it on the bottom. And then just the garter cube detail around on the heel. Uh, funny thing, Actually, I ran out of the merino and the mohair blends on one of these socks. I can't even tell which one. I think it has like two repeats less of the garter cubes. But I said, you know what? <laughs> you can't really tell. And I didn't feel like going back and taking it out of this one or whichever one has the more. Yeah, I think this is the longer foot one. <laughs> So it's just, it's a handmade pair of socks. Nobody's gonna notice. Um, I just went with it. Cause 
I, it made me really happy that I used up every last bit of that mohair that has been just sitting in my scrap bucket <laughs> for uh, over a year now, a little less than a year now. Um, yeah, so these are my garter cube socks. And like I said, if you're interested in knowing exactly how I did it, I do have it written out on my journal, but I feel like it would not come across very clear right here, right now without rehearsing and, and like advising all my notes just on the fly. <laughs> um, so yeah, garter cube socks. I can try to put them on. I have not weaved in the ends yet. I, you guys, I made these like right after my last podcast. So they've been done for like a month. And I'm usually really good about finishing weaving in my ends and blocking and stuff. But I think because they're socks and I don't really wear hand knit socks that much, I just kind of put it off. But eesh. yeah, there they are. They're really warm and fuzzy. Yeah, so that's my second finished object. And my next finished object I'm really excited about. So if you saw my last couple of videos, I talked a lot about Irene Lynn's, uh, I forgot the name of that vest, the orange one that I made. What is it called? Cramp. Blair vest, yes. Okay, so I recently discovered Irene Lynn's vest patterns. <laughs> And I love the Blair vest so much, I wanted to make another one of her patterns, her vest patterns. So I made the Laura vest. Here it is. I like the back better because it has an extra cable pattern. That cable pattern right there just makes me really happy. <laughs> um, and I'll put it on for you in a second. Um, but first, I'll talk about the yarn. This is made out of Hobby Lobby's, uh, I love this cotton, I think is what the name of it is. It's just a worst weight, 100% cotton. And um, I don't think they have colorway names, but it's just this beige. Oh, actually, I think it does. It's called khaki. This is the khaki colorway. Uh, let's see. Needle size. I used two millimeters. 2.5 millimeters for the body and 2 millimeters for the rib. And I made a size... Size 3. Yes, I made a size 3. Sorry, I, I, I think I originally made a size 2 and then I crossed it out in 3. And then I wrote an arrow to the 3 and said size 2 seemed a bit too small. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I made a size 3. And yeah, I think the only alterations that I made from the pattern is the, I like split hems on, especially on vests, I come to find out. Um, so yeah, I had added a split hem and made the back a little bit longer than the front. That's what I did for my Blair vest and I love it, so. But I'll put it on. It's not exactly the perfect vest for this sweater that I'm wearing, but you guys at least will be able to see what it looks like on a body, so. I know I really appreciate that on other, um, knitting videos like this. I like to see how the finished object looks like on somebody. <laughs> so, stand up here. It's just very relaxed fit and cozy to just throw over anything, honestly. Um, I'm really good about remembering repeats of lace patterns and cables and stuff, usually. But I will say, I think I messed up on this. Uh, and the entire time I knit this, I had to keep referring back to the chart to, for this, just this one section of the pattern, this one little lacy section. <laughs> I don't know what it was about my brain, but I could not wrap my head around that repeat. <laughs> Um, but I mean, it's not like it was that hard to just look at the chart that she gave you. Um, I actually had a lot of fun making this. The, what do you call this? Um, is it broken rib? Moss stitch? I can't remember the name of this, uh, filler stitch that she has, but I love the way this looks in this cotton yarn and it's, it feels really nice too. 
Uh, I'm really impressed with how this yarn holds up. I haven't really worn this th that much, but after blocking it, in, blocking it and everything, it really just, I wouldn't say bloomed because it's cotton and it's not like a wool or uh, animal fiber, but I don't know, it just situated itself in a really pleasing manner. <laughs> And it's soft. Don't sleep on cheap, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's, I mean, it's costly wise, it's cheap, but just 100% cotton yarn. Don't sleep on it because it's actually pretty nice. <laughs> and you think, well, personally, I think plant fibers is a summer uh, yarn, which isn't wrong, it is. But I think that this would also just be good for fall time and winter time too, because it's a layering piece. And it does keep you warm. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. I sure really like this. Another thing that I really like about doing split hems is uh, I have a hard time, and I'll talk a bit about it for my next project that I'm about to show you, but when you have a full round um, bottom hem for sweaters or whatever garment you're making, I have a hard time with the tubular cast off being too tight. And with split hem, it's, you know, it's it's not a continuous thing. You, ha you have this extra space, whereas that would normally be connected. It's, it's open. And so even if your tubular cast off is a little tight, which I think I did actually pretty good with this cotton yarn, it is, it's a little bit more forgiving. You're not going to feel that tension when you're wearing it because of the split hem. So yeah, just another reason to split your hems <laughs> if, you, if you like the way it looks. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this little cutie. I like it a lot. Highly recommend Irene Lynn's patterns. I want to make some of her sweaters this, this fall and winter, I think, as well. Not just her vests, but I just find that her the, the way her vests like lay on the body to be really cute in my style, for sure. It's more... It's, it's a good way of kind of bougieing out your casual t-shirt looks. <laughs> I love the way it looks with just a t-shirt and that's all I wear basically is t-shirts. So it just really works for me. <laughs> so that's my Laura vest. Where did my journal go? Oh, there it is. And my next finished object is the, I don't know how to pronounce this, Ru Rubos. It's a sweater by Amy Christopher's. Um, so I went to the f a fabric sale with my mother-in-law and a friend in August, beginning of August, and they actually had yarn there, which I wasn't expecting. Well, I knew they would have yarn, but they had 100% wool yarn that I was not expecting. And so um, I got some of that in this really bright blue color. Uh, I showed it, I think I showed it at the end of my last podcast. So I actually made a sweater out of it already. And here it is. There's something in the back of this. And I can't tell. Yeah, okay, this is the front. It does have some short row shaping on, around the neck, so. Um, I knew I wouldn't have enough yarn of the blue to get a full length sweater. So I had some similar weight white yarn in my stash that I was gifted um, a while back from a coworker. And so th they're actually both Red Heart as well. The blue is Red Heart Chic Sheep. And the white is Red Heart Full O Sheep. And so this is actually, the big difference between these two is they're both merino wool, but the blue is really high twisted and the white is just single ply. <laughs> so um, it's actually really interesting to see the difference between how the twists make the rows look. I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but the blue does that thing with high twist yarns where you can see one leg looks very leaning and the other leg looks very straight. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's actually really hard to tell on the camera. But and if you've knit with a high twist yarn, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It can make the stockinette look a little bit different not bad i actually kind of like the way it looks but the but the single roving has very clear v's on it it doesn't do that weird twist thing 
but anyway the pattern does not like have stripe recommendations but it's just basically a raglan sweater um so i just i think it's every i think this stripes are seven rows each and i just knit it till i liked the body width um i knit it with a four millimeters for the body and 3.25 millimeters for the ribbing um Three point, I actually just used four millimeters for the bottom hem ribbing as well because I didn't want it to cinch in quite as much. So, but I did use 3.25 millimeters for the uh, neckline and the cuffs ribbing. So, um, and at the size three, so it does have some positive ease. And they, on the pattern, it was recommending wrap and turns for the short row shaping, but I just went with the German short row double stitches instead because that's what I'm really familiar with. Um, I think I did do some alterations for the sleeves as far as like how many sl stitches to pick up uh, when you do raglan sleeves, but nothing dramatic. And then Let's see. Oh, I actually, when I finished it the first time, I had some white stripes. Like, do you know? Okay, well, this is actually a good example. See how my, this is just like a, a store-bought sweater. It has like a, a different color at the top and some of them will have an, another stripe below there as well. I tried to do that with these cuffs, but I found I didn't like the way it looked because it was ribbing and it didn't have, it wasn't like a clear line. It was kind of like, um, the knits and the pearls were making it seem a little bit weird looking. So um, I also didn't like the my bind off. So when I finished it, I just ripped out those stripes and rebound off on the sleeves. And also I didn't like my Italian bind off. Like I was mentioning earlier, I tried to do a tubular, Italian tubular, I think it's the same thing, a bind off and it was way too tight and when I wore it I could feel the bind off and that just was throwing my sensories just berserk <laughs> so I unbound it off and did a a stretchy bind off where it's you you do two stitches and then you knit those two stitches together and then you knit another stitch and then knit those two stitches together so it was a little bit stretchier um yeah I can put this on it's gonna be really hot <laughs> uh, oh before I do one thing I wish I would have not done is my raglan stitches ended a lot sooner in length than the pattern was supposed to I guess my gauge might have been a little bit off I did gauge swatch but oh well um, so and it says in the pattern to just knit to knit in the round till you get to a certain length on your raglan and I did that, but then it has this weird, like, puckering extra fabric right there. It's not too noticeable when you wear it. Not You'll see it in a second, but I don't like the way it looks just, like, not on my body. It looks kind of weird, in my opinion. But it's not that big of a deal. So I'll try it on real quick. It's going to be really warm with two sweaters on. And I have a knitted bralette on, too, so... It's a turtleneck. And I thought about sewing this actually down a little bit too. Like sewing it, folding it on itself and then sewing it down. But maybe not. Maybe it'll be nice in the winter to have a turtleneck. It's actually not too bad after I blocked it. Before I blocked it, it was like up here. <laughs> so it definitely relaxed it a bit. Stand up. So yeah, I I could have definitely just stopped at that raglan or like four or five rows. I have plenty of arm space. Yeah, but that's okay. I'm not that mad about it. <laughs> I just thought I would mention it so you guys knew how I was feeling about it. I am hitting this table. <laughs> Sorry if that's making a loud noise. Um, yeah, and while I was making it, I kept singing that SpongeBob song best time to wear a striped sweater is all the time <laughs> one with the collar turtleneck 
that's the kind. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is very hot. <laughs> I'm gonna take it off. And then also before I did the stripes, I was kind of feeling like blue man group vibes because this is like such a bright blue. <laughs> So that was my Rubos. This is actually a free pattern too on Ravelry. So check it out. All right, that one's done. My next finished objects are, so my sister's kids are, they both have their birthdays in September. And um, so she's having a birthday party for both of them together this coming weekend. And so I knit them, so, well, I one of them's crochet, one of them's knit. Uh, little gifts um, Her youngest is turning one and I made him this cute little vest And this is the Ollie's everyday slipover by Hannah Graham uh, I knit it with knit picks Heatherly sport in the colorway cabana. I made him a baby blanket in the same yarn and I had a skein left so This only used like 50 grams. I think so I have um, some, still have some leftover. <laughs> uh, I made it with a 3.25 millimeter for the body and 2.75 millimeter for the ribbing. And I made the size 12 months. And the nice thing about this yarn is it is machine washable and you can put it in the dryer as well. I just wet blocked it cause I have the materials for it but you can definitely just uh, stick it in the washer. It's so cute. <laughs> and a little split him for him as well. Um, yeah, I even put in my journal, not much to say about this. I knit it exactly to pattern. And yeah, it was just a quick little knit. And then the other thing that I made, this was for her oldest who was turning three. I made him a little football because this kid just is awestruck by any throwable ball type anything so <laughs> um yeah i just made him a little football this was a free pattern by chelsea roberts on ravelry it's called plush football and i did this in like two hours while i was watching a critical role episode just whip that up real quick and i knit this with or sorry i crocheted this with a 3.5 millimeter a hook and this was just some scrap uh, the brown is just some scrap cotton yarn that I have worsted weight and the white is just some scrap uh, acrylic worsted weight yarn as well pretty easy pretty simple followed its pattern to a T and yeah I hope he likes throwing it around okay that's it for my knitting finished objects but if you watched the end of my last episode, uh, you know that I got some... Well, first of all, you know that I'm going to a Ren Fair in October, and I wanted to make a hooded cloak for that. And so I got some wool fabric, and I made it, and I love it. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I just feel powerful and whimsical with it on. I love it. I'll put it on for you guys in a second. Um, the pattern is by Annie Chi Designs here on YouTube. It's a wonderful tutorial. I'm actually going to make another one for my husband. Um, I'll show you the fabric at the end of this episode, but actually no, I'll just show you after I finish showing you my cloak, because why not? But look at this. I love it. I'll put it off for you. This is cute little clip I found on Amazon. I can't show you the full length of it because uh, the way my camera is set up, <laughs> it's just, maybe I'll throw in the pictures I took of it in my mirror um, when I finished it. But yeah, I just did the way it rests on my shoulder and it drapes beautifully and the hood is super dramatic. Um, I'll put it on for you. I'm looking at my <laughs> preview of the video over here. It's why I look over here sometimes. Um, 
I think actually my friend recommended this is perfect idea, but you can get those little comb, um, comb hair pieces where you, you know, put it into your hair and it like holds onto your hair and I'm going to sew it to the top of the hood so that I can put it into my hair and it'll actually stay because <laughs> the hood is huge. It's like super overly dramatic, but yeah, I love it. It's it's a hundred percent wool fabric that has these beautiful like speckles of different colors and it's just a really nice gray. So yeah, so much fun to make and yeah, I'm excited to make my husband's. I'll show you the fabric I'm making with his. It's it's more of this wool fabric, but it looks a little bit different. So. His is more of like a brown color and it has herringbone. Wow, you really cannot see that through this camera. You can kind of see it there. It's a herringbone stitch. Um, yeah, I'll make him one as well. Uh, exact same video that I followed, it's super easy. And I'm excited to do that. So yeah, there's that. And that is all my finished objects in general. So now we're on to works in progress, which are not that many. <laughs> um, if you've been around for a while, you know that I'm pretty monogamous with my projects, at least like one knitting project, one sewing project, one crochet, you know, I like to focus on one thing. So knitting wise, Um, my birthday was uh, September 4th, and today is the 14th for anybody watching it in the future. Um, so yeah, my birthday was September 4th, and my mom took me out to Greenville, and we went to uh, this yarn store, a local yarn store called Needle Tree, and she let me pick out yarn, <laughs> and I found Juniper Moon has this wonderful fingering weight yarn called Harriet Fine. They have, I think there's a Harriet uh, that's like a worsted weight as well, but it's baby alpaca and um, polyamide or nylon. Um, I have more skeins up there, but I didn't bring it down with me. So anyway, um, I, oh my God, I love this yarn, you guys. It just feels so great. Um, and I got four skeins of the color. It doesn't have names. It's 2005 is this color. It's like a very heathery gray. And then one skein, one skein of 2001, which is this heathery white color. Hey, Deuce. What you doing? You want to say hi? Hmm? Yeah. Um... So yeah, I got that yarn and I basically immediately looked for a pattern that would work for it and cast it on. So I found the uh, Baroque Novu. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's by Rachel Ilsley or Unwind Knitwear. She has a plethora of absolutely gorgeous colorwork sweaters. Um, and so I picked that one because well, I had narrowed it down to like two or three and then I asked my mom which one she liked best and she was the one that bought me the yarn. And we both actually agreed that this one would be best. And yeah, so I made it out of that yarn and then I'm using a 2.5 millimeter for the stockinette part of the body, a 3.25 millimeter for the color work, the stranded color work section. And I'm using a two millimeter for the ribbing and I made a size large. Uh, and she has two options for the neck, the neck band, uh, either a single, a single neck band, like, um, just one layer or a double layered neckline. And I did the, the, like the folded double layer neckline, but I didn't fold it because I like thick neck bands. So this is it. So I followed the pattern for folded. So normally it would also, it would be folded down on itself that but I like the thick neck band um 
Isn't it gorgeous? I love it so much. I just finished the color work for the body and I'm working on just the rest of the body now. Uh, usually, so after I finished the color work of the body, I had like two rows in my, the skein of the main color was finished. And usually what I would do at that point is go and finish the sleeves before I finish the rest of the body. But um, the reason why I do that usually is because I want to make sure I have enough yarn to do full sleeves and then uh, and then I'm not worried about my I'm not really worried about my sweater body length too much because if it is cropped it's cute for like putting over dresses or high waisted pants or whatever the length of the body doesn't matter as much as the sleeves in my opinion so that's why I usually do that but I know for a fact I already I do have enough yarn for this because basically everything up to like right here has been just one skein of this of this yarn and obviously mixed with the color work color as well but i have i have i have three whole skeins of the main color after that so i know for a fact i'm gonna have enough um and two which is the real reason why i ended up just continuing continuing on the body is because i finished that right before my D, D session and i wanted to be able to knit on something like in between like my uh my battle my turn in the battle sequence so uh i just i just added another skein of the main color and just continued on the body <laughs> um because i just wanted to knit on something simple and not have to look at a pattern so yeah um highly recommend this pattern the color work is so much fun there's not really that many rows where you have to catch floats and even though where you do it's like it's I, it's not that bad. It's wonderful. I, spring and summer are out of here. I mean, it's still a little bit warm, but mentally I am in fall mode already, as I'm sure most of you are. And I just wanted to get my hands on some stranded color work with some woolly yarn. And I have gotten that out of the sweater. <laughs> um, I'm actually a little bit sad that I went through it so fast. I, I think I cast this on the day after I got this yarn, so on the 6th, and I finished it on the, th I finished the color work on the 13th, so you can tell what I've been working on. <laughs> um, I, still st I do still have some color work for the sleeves left, so I'm not completely done with that, but it's not as fun as body color work because sleeves are on a much smaller circumference, so it's kind of a little bit more fiddly, whereas on body color work, you have all this space on your needles and you can stretch your hands out a little bit more. Uh, it's just generally a more enjoyable process for me. But I do have color work planned in my future. Um, so there's that. It's not like that's the only thing I have planned. <laughs> um, I have, I can see in my future and my future is stranded color work for this fall and this winter. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is my current work in progress for knitting. And this next thing is technically a work in progress, although I'm done with the sewing part, but I made a corset from this, this pattern. It's the Buterick B4669. I made corset C without the peplum part. And so the, th that's the corset pattern that I'm going to use for my Ren Fair outfit. And because I've never made a corset before, I wanted to practice, but I didn't want to practice with the fabric that I bought for my Ren Faire outfit, which is this right here. Even though I have way more than I need, I still didn't want to cut into it and ruin it. Um, so I looked in my fabric stash and I had, I made this bag. If I can get it off, Lucy, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. Nah, she left. Okay. Um, I made this bag a couple years ago and I had fabric left over, all of the different fabric that I had for this. Um, and well, of course hey, you don't really need that much fabric to make it. So uh, I used that fabric. I used the word fabric like six times in the past 10 seconds. It feels weird. Anyway, here it is. 
And I'll insert a picture of me wearing it. It doesn't have grommet holes in it yet. Um, my friend that is going with us to the Ren Fair is borrowing some grommet hole punchers from her, her grandmother, and I haven't got my hands on them yet, so I can't lace this up yet, but in the picture I have um, bias, bias binding clips on it to keep it together. You can kind of see the shaping of it. Anyway, here it is. Because of the way that this corset is put together, the straps are held together with, with ribbon right here. It's kind of hard to show you what it looks like. <laughs> Uh, the inside is kind of comical. It's supposed to be really finished in the inside, but like I said, I've never done a corset before. Um, I've never even really done binding in general. I'm a very beginner sewer. Um, basically all I've ever done is the cloak and this bag, and the cloak is easy. It's just um, doing finishing seams, basically. <laughs> so this was a way more complicated than what I'm used to. And binding, like I said, is a new situation for me. And so when I did it for the first part of the panels, I didn't realize what it was trying to tell me to do for the, when you first sew down the binding on the inside of your, of your piece. So I just sewed down the raw edges and then just folded them over onto the front. And then I hand stitched the, the bias down. I did not realize until I went to do the middle part of it that you're supposed to put the raw edges together and then fold it on itself on the back and over to the front so that it has this more finished look on the inside. <laughs> oh well, you're not gonna see the inside anyway. <laughs> um, I also have some very clear mistakes here where the f I didn't catch this lining fabric. You can see the quilting fabric <laughs> in the inside. It actually happened at the same spot on both sides. And then also the pattern did this thing with the bias seam um, right here where you connect these two side pieces with the back. And it told me, it told me to sew it down with um, wrong sides together. And and then you put the bias over it somehow. I couldn't wrap my head around it, so all I did was put the right sides together and sew it down so the inside has this very obvious seaming piece right there. <laughs> but the front looks, like the outside of it looks fine. So I'm, I'm probably gonna do it the same way with my other corset that I make. So, um, and there's, there's definitely some ugly bits <laughs> like where this biasing connected to this biasing is not very pretty and um, the top of so you do these biases first and then you put this edge piece on it afterwards and I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to make the edges of that bias like look like close it because you may not be able to tell, but there is boning inside of this. It's really just a zip tie, a big long zip tie. Um, <laughs> I just wanted some more stability where the grommet holes were gonna be so the fabric doesn't pull as much. Anyway, the zip tie can like was coming in and out of this bias because the ends weren't sewed down. Um, so I did some ugly stitching on the top there. <laughs> it looks very homemade, but I'm okay with that. I'm. I mean, I'm probably not gonna wear this that often anyway. It's gonna be like just a, like a outfit, like a, I wouldn't say cosplay cause I don't cosplay, but like a Ren Faire thing. I don't know if I'm actually gonna wear it like in my everyday outfit. Cause as I said, I like t-shirts. I'm a very casual girl. <laughs> so, but anyway, regardless, I had a lot of fun making this. I learned a lot about my sewing machine. I feel much more confident doing anything on it now. And also hand stitching is really fun. I, I think that might've been one of my favorite parts of this project was just hand stitching the biasing down on the front. It doesn't look like very professional. It looks very handmade, but I kind of like that idea for it anyway. And it's a lot slower than your, your sewing machine, but you can control your fabric a lot better in my opinion and it was especially good for these tight curve pieces. 
I could not imagine sewing this bias down. I had a hard enough time doing the back of it with the sewing machine. Um, and yeah, it was just a lot more of a slow process and I just really liked it. So yeah, that's my corset. And I showed you the pattern that I used. Yeah. So that just leads me into my future plans, which frankly is just my husband's cloak and my other corset um, for sewing. And then for knitting, I mean, I have rough plans for yarns in my stash. Uh, I have like a shawl planned, um, a colorwork sweater with uh, my, my uh, Knit Picks palette sampler I showed you guys last time. I actually decided I put a poll up on Instagram between two patterns different than the ones that I talked about last episode. I found two that were much better and it landed on the Merriment sweater which is really like a Christmas sweater but with the colors that I'm using it's gonna be more fall vibes and it's all over color work um, top down yoke sweater. I'm really excited to cast that on as well but I think I'm gonna wait a little bit to cast it on because that yarn is a little bit more of a rustic yarn than compared to this stuff. This has nylon in it and it feels a lot cooler to the touch. It's still a little bit warm here in South Carolina so um yeah I think I'm gonna wait till probably October or something unless I just absolutely don't feel like knitting anything else that's probably when I'll cast that on so you may or may not see it cast on next podcast or show and tell episode. Um, but yeah, like I said, color work, strand of color work is in my future, <laughs> for sure. Um, I don't have any acquisitions. My acquisitions are the projects that I'm working on right now, basically the Juniper Moon Farms, um, yarn and the fabric. So that's already been done. And I don't have any noteworthy accounts. I don't know if anybody has noticed if you follow me on Instagram or even here, I've been kind of quiet on social media. And I think that I've just kind of been a little bit on a lull for my creative energy. And so I haven't been like taking photos of finished objects or really even putting up things on my Instagram stories either. <laughs> so I haven't really been on the crafting realm of social media that much lately. Even on YouTube, I haven't been really watching that many crafting videos either. Um, most of my content consumption has been D&D related. I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3 and uh, reading. I bought my, the first time I read these books was um, on my, I was renting it from my library on an e-reader. <laughs> so, but I wanted to reread them because my, my brother's reading through them. And this is the uh, Broken Empire, I think is the, the name of the trilogy by Mark Lawrence. Favorite fantasy book ever. Um, and so this is the second book in the series. My free time has been reading this sucker right here. Uh, highly recommend if you like high fantasy. And it's, it's definitely adult. It's not like a young adult fantasy. Um, it can be gruesome at times. And the character is not like... He's not a decent dude. He's It's a very anti-hero type book. So if that's your vibe, highly recommend. If it's not, probably don't read it. <laughs> um, yeah. And he has other books that, in the same universe that I'm really excited to read. So yeah, that's where my energy has been and why it's not been on social media, which hasn't been a bad thing. It's been kind of nice, not gonna, not gonna lie. So <laughs> um, I think that's everything. And... Yeah, I will see you guys next month in October. Can't believe it's already October. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> Halfway through September. <laughs> I'm excited for fall though. I have fall, fall candle going over there. And um, my mother-in-law and I have been looking at fall decorations and getting all excited for that. So <laughs> um, yeah. I hope you're excited for fall as well, or spring if you're in the southern hemisphere. Changing of seasons is always very exciting and can be really cozy. So 
I hope you're enjoying that. I hope you're enjoying whatever you're crafting or um, spending your creative creative energy on, whether well or even just diving into something like Starfield or Baldur's Gate if you're my um, my fellow gaming nerds. <laughs> Uh, just enjoying whatever it is you're doing in life right now and finding happiness in the little things. Um, yeah, um, I will catch you guys next episode. Thanks for watching. Take care.